North Carolina State University at a meeting hosted by IBM talking about potential for open source in K-12. I was very, very fortunate to be on a wonderful panel with Brian Bellendorf from Apache Foundation. We got our start in the early days of the web as a group of disaffected webmasters who were using a piece of freely available web software, but uh, uh, had difficulty with it. We were fixing bugs. We were sharing these bug fixes with each other, like uh, tr baseball trading cards, if you will, these, these patches, as it's called. And uh, one day we discovered the group that put out the web server that we were using uh, basically folded when all their developers left to go join a brand new company called Netscape. So uh, a bunch of us decided that, hey, we're dependent upon this software. We don't want to become full-time web server developers, but we want to be able to, to, to use this thing that we've had for free and be able to improve it and all that kind of stuff. Um, we looked at the license of the code, and uh, the license said, here's the software. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, don't blame us when it breaks, right? Uh, and uh, we said, hey, that's a pretty good bargain. Why don't we pass the same bargain on to the next group of people, right? Uh, so we formed a, a mailing list, right? Uh, and this was mostly, again, webmasters and people working at some early internet service providers or, or website design companies or places like Amazon or the Internet Movie Database. Uh, and we combined our patches together and decided to call it a, a patchy server for that reason um, and, uh, and went forward. And really the model of how we worked was based upon uh, uh, kind of us as a group as peers proposing ideas, you know, vetting each other's uh, ideas and patches and fixing bugs, you know, as a, as a group, as a team. Um, none of us had met in person. Well, some of us had met, but as a, as a group, we didn't meet in person until 1998, really three years after we got our start. And long after, by the way, we'd become the most predominant web server product on the planet. Um, and yet at this time, still, no money, no dime, not direct to us from this piece of open source software. But plenty of us, you know, uh, uh, made our living off of building things on top of this piece. And that's really the story, I think, of, of kind of successful open source projects writ large, which is <clears throat> people working together on, on common technologies to solve common problems so they can go off and make money on other places or so they can have fun. They can try new ideas. They can, you know, uh, be experimental, right? Um, and that's, that's really the same story of Apache and, and of Linux and, and all these other open source projects. You know, by people showing up and volunteering things and saying what they can do and building upon each other's ideas, uh, you generally find a way to do it that, that, that is, uh, carries a tone of respect for other people's ideas, that uh, you know, uh, recognizes that passion and motivation are some of the most finite resources in the world, right? And you, got to, you have to cherish that. You don't want to you know, naysay somebody's idea just out of hand, right? Um, and so I think it would just it just kind of fell fell out naturally from from a you know kind of the golden rule of do unto others and, and that kind of thing didn't seem like magic to us I guess when we were doing it um, but uh, uh, yeah it, it turns out to be not that hard to to be able to work together when people have the same common goal which is let's build a product that that does all this great stuff um, one thing that we did do that <clears throat> made it easy to make some of these decisions was to have a very uh, modular API, which made it easy for us to be able to say, hey, if you want that special cool feature, do it as a separate thing and, and make it successful and we'll decide whether to bring this into the product once it's become successful or not, right? Another key thing that plays into this that is true of all open source projects is that an open source license like we had on ours uh, that Linux has, etc., carries with it something called the right to fork which means that if I were to go all, you know, Colonel Kurtz on, on the project and start saying, we're going to go here, you know, and no one else wanted to follow, well, all of those other people could decide to pick up the code and go start a different project somewhere else. You know, if they couldn't kick me out, which is probably what they would have tried to do first, right? Um, this right to fork, you know, means that you don't have to have any tolerance for dictators. You don't have to deal with people who make bad technical decisions. Uh, uh, you know, you can take that future into your hands. And, and if you find a group of other people who agree with you, you can go on and create a new project around it. So I think that rule, that right to fork, limits the kind of excesses that we see whenever we start to talk about how do groups make decisions and, and, and conflict arises, how do you deal with that conflict? And it means that you, your style of leadership isn't so much one of control and plotting you know, moves ahead of time, but instead one of um, being able to, to get people on your side, convince them that, that you're, the, you're gonna value their efforts, value their, the, the contributions that they make. 
Collabnet is a products and services company focused on uh, replicating um, open source collaboration practices and tools uh, to the rest of the software industry. I came to realize that there was a certain, you know, kind of, uh, that if you could define how it was that Apache built software, um, define it from the perspective of process and the perspective of tools, that was something that, you know, if you could distill it down to a science and make it repeatable, you could take it to the rest of the software industry. And you could do that for more open source projects, brand new ones, or you could even do it inside of companies. I started a company in 1999 on the premise of let's figure this out, let's put this in a bottle if we can or define it, and let's take it to the rest of the industry in the form of a collaboration platform um, uh, targeted at version control, issue tracking, and also capturing the ad hoc inform, you know, uh, free form conversation that takes place in open source projects. And, and so part of it is that, part of it as well as educating uh, uh, communities on, on best practices around open source engineering. How do you uh, have a development process that is transparent and accessible to everyone in an organization 